Okay, um, now we really have a challenge because uh, Bobrek is a lot about diversity and plasticity, and now we have the challenge to move from hardcore bioinformatics to probably hardcore functional annotation. So you have to get a reswitch of your brain and coming back to the epigenome sensitivity. Um, I had mentioned already that in our annotation map there were the different layers and one is the, the sensitivity to environmental impacts. And the first speaker will be Jens Manzelo uh, on the effect of summer heat on the in vitro fertility performance and pot uh, potential epigenetic mechanisms which might drive this, uh, these effects. So the floor is to you. So thank you, Krista. Do you hear me? Hello, yeah. Things here. Ah. Okay, so you see it's quite a long title, so it includes everything which I want to tell you in the next minutes. Um, the cooperation of, of basically three different institutions that you see here. Um, it's part of work package five, ep epigenetics and environmental impact. And today I want to focus on task five, three, on task three, study of fraternal inter and transgenerational transmission of heat stress uh, introduced e epigenetic modulation. So, and so the partners are here, the Luki from Finland, FPN from Dummersdorf, and, and, and Uliesch from Belgium here. Oops. Okay, I, first I want to introduce the experimental approach. And in this, we could take advantage of the fact that the summer 2018 was the hottest summer ever in, in, in the in our area, in Mecklenburg, Western Pomerania, Pomerania, we had an average temperature of 19.2 compared to average overall temperature over the decades of 16.3. And you see here, ah, uh, yeah, okay, geht gar nicht. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can, you can see it only on your own. Um, so we have in, we collected from three bulls a sperm in, in the hot summer season from May, June, July, August. So this means that the, the, the period of spermatogenesis was in the, really in the hot season and from the same bulls in the following winter season. And this is the approach. We have these three bulls. We call them F0 founder generation bulls. So it's, it, from that point of view, it's a quite a small uh, design, but we really wanted to go into depth and analyze uh, the, the offspring of these bulls in, in, in all these uh, parameters we have here in Bobrek. So, so we collected um, sperm semen in, in the hot summer season. So we expect that this was a heat stress for those animals and from the same animals in the winter, and we, we had these two different um, semen samples. And with these semen, sam semen samples, we generated a next generation by artificial insemination in a farm. Um, about 200, 120 cows were inseminated. We got uh, 20, 42 calves, and from this we selected six male offspring from each of these semen samples, the hot, sum, hot semen, um, summer semen samples and winter semen samples. And uh, what we analyzed is the semen quality parameters of the F0 semen and F1 semen, for example, um, ejaculate volume, sperm density, motility, and so on. And we also determined the in vitro blastocyst rate. So we generated uh, in vitro blastocysts and determined the rate. And with, with these blastocysts, we worked further on. We generated F1 blastocysts with the F0 semen, F2 blastocysts with the F1 semen. And we analyzed the transcriptome, methylome, and chromatin architecture. And here you see an uh, example of bovine uh, in vitro produced uh, blastocysts hatching, they are in the hatching stage, they'll just leave their, uh, their, their, their zona pellucida here. 
Okay, and these are the some results, the more morphological results. Um, ejaculate volume was not different. So here on the left side, you see the F0 semen and, the, and, and separated by this vertical line, you see the F1 semen. We collected F1 semen at two different um, times. So at when these animals were one year old and, one and, and about one to two months later, to be sure that it's not, that it's really, uh, that the, our data are really uh, good. And here you see the um, s uh, sperm, sorry, I can't, nearly cannot see that, sperm density parameters. And um, there, there might be uh, the, the tendency that the winter semen has um, higher density, but it is not significant. So then we analyzed uh, the, the motility of, sper of the fresh sperm, uh, the motility of the freeze, frozen and thawed sperm, this is, uh, and, and, and heated sperm, this is a heat resistance test, which is routinely done by the breeding company. And here we, to our, little bit to our surprise, we really see that in the of F1 sperm semen, semen samples, we have uh, significant differences, which means that the summer semen has lower motility than the winter. No, th this is wrong, I have to say. The semen from bulls, which are generated with summer semen, have a lower motility than those which have been generated with the winter semen, because these animals have been uh, kept under identical conditions. They are all uh, produced, uh, the artificial insemination was in, in July and they were born in April of the next year and there were uh, no direct influence of uh, heat stress, no differential in, uh, um, influence of heat stress. We also determined the blastocyst rates and here we found that in the F1 semen samples the F0 semen samples, so the directly heat stressed semen, we, we see a difference, uh, a significant difference in blastocyst rate and in hatch rate. So and from these data, we conclude that the sperm motility of the of F1 sperm was affected, and the in vitro blastocyst hatching rate of F0 sperm was affected, and why we didn't see an, an effect in the F, in, in the, uh, uh, of the motility in the F1 sperm, this might be due to uh, too, too many, uh, too low uh, number of samples. So now, and to find the reason for these um, possibly transgenerational effects, so because we saw an effect in the F1 sperm samples, we uh, analyzed, we, this is, was mainly done by Abner, the sperm uh, small non-coding RNA content as a possible vehicle for male epigenetic trans transmission because in mouse it's well known that some SNC RNA species are important for uh, transferring environmental effects. So we compared um, the, the content of this small non-coding RNA in F0 and F1 sperm and these are the first, uh, at the moment, preliminary results. Abner is working hard on the evaluation of the, all these data. So here you see a different uh, non, a small non-coding RNA species. The, the most um, frequent species is the PI, the PV interacting RNA. This is the about 70 to 60 to 70 percent. Then we have microRNA. We have a small tRNA, we have rRNA, and we have also th these uh, small nucleolar and small nuclear uh, RNA. It's a very low um, uh, proportion. And the most um, obvious, by, by this frequency distribution, we see here that the rRNA seems to be different in the winter versus summer semen samples. So we have. Uh, this was true in the F0 semen samples, but also in the F1 semen samples. And we have a similar picture, although these semen samples have not been directly stressed. 
So the observation was um, that the largest portion is by the PV interacting RNA, the P PI RNA, and this is well in line with, with the literature. So also other groups have found that. Uh, but we saw that the ribosomal RNA, the rRNA, showed most differences when we compare winter versus summer semen samples in the F0 as well as, as in the F1 semen samples. Um, nevertheless, uh, Abner was, I think, first uh, uh, analyzing microRNA data, and here is the principal component uh, analysis. Uh, but here we did not see a real good um, clustering uh, of, of the summer and winter semen samples, neither in the F1 nor in the F0 bull generation. So there was no clear group-specific clustering. But we saw some individual microRNAs with high significance. This can be seen here in this table. These are the 20 most differently expressed um, microRNAs. And especially this one is highly downregulated during the, in the summer semen samples with really significant p-values. And um, Abner was analyzing the geo terms of this um, of this specific microRNA, and this microRNA is, uh, may regulate more than 2,000 different predicted genes, and 99 are shown here, and, uh, and uh, we have, no, sorry. Hmm. Some cellular functions, some important cellular functions are definitely regulated by this one microRNA. So uh, uh, some uh, preliminary evaluation of the ribosomal RNA data. So in, in F1, F0 semen, we have 37 differentially expressed ribosomal RNAs. 22 are up and 14 are downregulated. In the F1 semen samples, we have 21, the 23 differentially expressed, 11 up and 12 downregulated. And from this data, we conclude that natural summer heat stress, so this was not no artificial stress to these bulls, during spermatogenesis, Affected in vitro blastocyst rates, and the motility was even in, uh, affected in the F1 offspring of these uh, bulls, and, and this is definitely would then be a transgenerational effect. And our hypothesis, which we are still working on, is that heat effects on semen quality parameters are transmitted possibly by these small non-coding RNAs because we see differences, for example, in the rRNA, but we will also have to see on the other uh, RNAs. And uh, of course, uh, a big um, portion of this project is the analysis of the blastocysts, the transcriptome analysis, um, methylome analysis, and chromatin architecture analysis which will uh, uh, some insight in, in these data and the chromatin architecture analysis will give you uh, Gabriel after my talk. And, but this is still ongoing work and we have to bring this together, these data from, from these different omics analysis. So I think of course the partners here and the, uh, the whole Bovrek consortium for giving us the possibility to do such a nice experiment. Thank you. Other questions for Jens? Then I have one question. Um, what do the breeding companies think about uh, this when they uh, when you, so did you present them the data and did you uh, receive any comment? So one breeding company is involved in that. They are also partners in, on the paper which we will publish soon. And the, the lady who is working with us, she, she was happy that this paper will be published. But so we have no real um, 
negative uh, comments on that. Because actually we cannot say anything about the, the fer fertility rates in, in, in vivo. So this, these are just in vitro data and uh, we don't know if, if there might be, might be also some in vivo effects if you buy from the same bull sperm semen sample from the summer or winter might be different or might be so low that you don't see it. But it's nice to know, of course. Maybe we have a representative of the semen of, the, of a semen company here in the audience who might comment on this. Yeah, I, I saw the paper at EAAP and I spoke to you afterwards. Um, you know, I think given that most artificial insemination bulls are created through embryo transfer, I think it's significant to know because we have different product development lines as opposed to production lines. So it's very simple just to use the, um, the product development lines from non-heat stress times. Very simple to have a significant effect on semen quality. I mean, one recommendation could be that these very precious bulls should be kept under air-conditioned conditions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>